Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Tastes Good Barbecue. What I have for you today. Today we're going to do a little walk around and installation. Just talk about a little features and benefits of the only fire Santa Maria attachment for the Weber kettle. Enjoy. So you're saying, Doctor, didn't you just do an unboxing and installation video on this same Only Fire Santa Maria attachment for the Weber kettle? Why, yes, I did. In that video, though, the installation or the put together of it went so darn quick. I was in time lapse and I wasn't really able to show you all the features and benefits that I wanted to show you. So we're going to actually take it from the table. We will install it onto the Weber kettle, talk about some features and benefits. Next, we're going to talk about some fuel sources, um, some that I have, some that I'm going to try. But again, this is my first time cooking on this style of grill. So those of you who have experience, feel free to chime in in the comments what you think I might be doing right, what I'm doing wrong. To me at this point, it's all theory. So let's jump on over. We'll take the unit, install it, and we'll get rolling. So first things first. Let's get it installed onto the Weber kettle. So you gotta take the lid off. And you'll have to store that somewhere. And you're also gonna to wanna to take these grates out. That's just as simple as putting it on. Just mounts right onto the frame there. The one thing you just have to be a little bit careful of on this guy is if you have the back lid holder you're just going to want to make sure that these little wing nuts don't interfere with that but this locks right in just like a champ there's three of them and there you go she's installed ready to go we'll come back here and we'll just talk about some of the features and benefits of it So first thing here, let's talk about the rotisserie. So it has two brackets that mount actually opposite, and all it takes is 2D batteries in there. Again, I'm not sure how I'm gonna like the battery operated setup, but it is what it is. And there it is right there. Again, you'd have, I guess you could have the grate down if you wanted to, if you're worried about food falling out. But it just plugs right in like so. Sets there. And again, it's centered, which is super cool. Hit that button. So there's that. Next up, let's show you the handle. So again, when I was installing it, I thought this was really sloppy, but it's for a reason. So you can raise this nice and smooth. And actually you lock it in right like so so there's no gears or anything up here that's how you lock her in this here let me see if i can show it to you so it just rolls up there on the pulley pretty nice and something that i also did so in my original video i had about six inches extra of this and i just ended up cutting it i'll show you why here in a bit One other quick note, so stability. So there is a little bit of a flex there, not much. Your food's not gonna fall off. But the reason for that is right here, you can see it's on the track. So that's all the flex I'm gonna get. 
This grate actually does come out. Mix that back in. It'll pull back. So quickly, those are some of the main features of it. Now let's jump in and let's talk about a couple setup options that you may have. Again, never used it before, not a pro. These are all theories. So chime in on the comments if you think it's gonna work. So as far as setup goes, I think we have a few options here. So the one thing with using lump charcoal is it tends to fall right through these grates. And it gets in and it kind of mucks up your, your ash cleaner. So theory number one here, that as you see is a brand new one. This is the original. So my first thought is to actually set these in opposite of each other to make that little grid pattern make those holes smaller so that the lump charcoal doesn't fall in. Another option would be to use charcoal baskets. So you can set these guys up here. I think this will be mostly beneficial when I have the rotisserie set up in so I can set a drip pan. Right there in the center to catch the drippings. Again, we'd have the rotisserie set up like so. So we'd have your meat directly over the pan and your heat source on the side. Okay, let's talk about some fuel source options. So I picked up this smoke firewood. This is actually an oak. Picked it up from Amazon. It's the 8 inch pieces. So these vary size. Let's go with the biggest piece I have in there and the smallest piece. I'm telling you it smells fantastic but it cost, it was 27 bucks for 10 pounds of this. So about 270 a pound. To me that's overpriced. The one feature of it is having these small pieces and you can also get 16 inch pieces which would be this big and they'll obviously fit in a 22 inch Weber kettle. Because if you get a little charcoal base going in here, these will fit in your charcoal baskets. So if you're doing that type of cook, that's a feature. But I'm really looking for a local source. Well, anybody in the Seattle area, I'll probably go 100 miles. But I got a little tip there, maybe up in Snohomish County, I can find somebody that has some smoking wood. Because over the long term, as much as I cook, I don't think this is a cost effective option for me. I also have to supplement that so I picked this up this is seven bucks um, it's your typical Weber wood chunks you look at 27 bucks for this I don't know. For, for me this might be the way to go but as for my base I'm using lump charcoal or you can use um, charcoal briquettes your choice but I've really been happy so far with the big green egg stuff plus I can find it half a mile up the street my local hardware store. Again, so the problem with the lump charcoal is falling through the grates. So I think we're combating that twofold. One by the cross grates and another by the baskets. So another little accessory here I got when I don't want to use a Weber lighter cube, get the charcoal going if I was just going straight wood. Picked up a little propane torch. Got myself the Wee Dragon. Can't wait to fire that baby up. Yeah. Playing with fire. So the cool thing I found that the kettle lid actually just slides right in like so. So you can store it like this. Or you can actually Drop her all the way down. It doesn't fit as well, but it fits like so. So one of the questions I had when I was getting this and my selling point to my wife, she asked me, hey, where are you going to store it? I said, I don't know. Now I know. Something I just found out that I will add in this video here. So I have a full Weber charcoal starter at its highest setting. fits like a glove. Alright, so that wraps up the quick installation, walk around with some features and benefits, and just some basically just some thinking out loud on how to cook on it. Talked about a little bit of, you know, using real wood in there. 
again they're just theories right now have not cooked on it so again please if anybody has any tips anybody cooked on this style of Weber kettle Santa Maria style attachment hey I'm open to learning if you have links to videos that you guys have done on these hey feel free to pop them in the comments there so I can take a look at them but the only thing left to do now is to actually cook on it and test some of these theories out I have a few planned cooks gonna start it off with some tri-tips um, figure I love tri-tip let's try it over some open fire I have some citrus chicken thighs coming soon have to use that rotisserie have to break that in with a prime rib and then also probably have to break that rotisserie in again with a whole chicken again thank you so much for watching if you like the video make sure you hit that like I will put a subscribe icon for you right about there another video right about there Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.